Hello and welcome along to this lesson all about how to use this pesky air button, this thing on the side here of your melodeon. On this Castanari Lily melodeon, uh, it's one of these type of push in buttons, okay, like that. And that's what you get on a lot of melodeons, uh, typically the more expensive ones. On this Honer Erica here, uh, the air button is a, a push down one, it goes into a slot like that you push down with your thumb. So they're the sort of two basic types of uh, air buttons. So what does the air button do? Why do we why do we even need it? Well on a piano accordion, um, which you may be familiar with, uh, got a piano keyboard here and lots of buttons here, the air button is used just to open the bellows prior to playing to let air uh, into the bellows quickly and when you finish playing you can expel all the air very quickly by pushing the air button in to close the bellows up so you can do the thing up, put it away. And that's basically it. But on a melodeon, it's actually an integral part of your playing technique. So most beginners struggle with this. I certainly did. I didn't really have a clue what to do with it. Um, at first I was trying to you know, press the button in between notes and sometimes that's what you do. Um, so let's just try and decide why we need to use this button properly. Let's take a simple tune like Frere Jacca. I'm going to pull the bellows out a bit. Now I'm not going to use the air button at all. I'm simply going to play the tune and we'll see what happens to the bellows as I play it. Now I've got about halfway through and my bellows have closed up and that's because most of the notes in this tune are on the push and of course as we keep pushing and pushing and pushing uh, with very little notes on the pull the bellows close up and that's true of most tunes. I think I can safely say most tunes have more push notes than pull um, so that's why we need to use the air button to get air into our bellows so that we don't run out. Now, on the music here, you can see underneath this note here, um, we've got the word air, and here, air, and here, and a bit lower down, you'll see that I put um, the word air underneath this note, and this note, and this note, and this note. So, that's just my music. I've just put this in. You won't see this on normal melodeon music, but just so that you get a handle on what to do. You're going to make sure that your thumb is over that air button um, and so that it's, you can press it in easily whilst having your fingers available for the bass note. So that's a lot of that is getting the right amount of hand through the strap having the strap at the right tension so it's not too loose, not too tight. And obviously a lot of this will depend upon the size and shape of your left hand or your right hand if you're left-handed. Okay, so that's very important. Make sure you can do all that comfortably. Operate the bass buttons, play the bass buttons and operate that air button. And just get a, a feel for it, you know, pushing it in, pulling it out as you just give the little button a squirt. It's, it's operated on a spring. Sometimes that spring gets worn and sometimes needs replacing. I've had an air button break on a very old melodeon of mine. Um, but it's basically just a spring really. And what it does on the push, it just lets uh, lots of air escape. And on the pull, it lets lots of air in to the bellows. Okay, so when you press buttons, of course, as you push buttons, holes open and that lets air out or in, depending on the direction of the bellows, you see. Um, so it has the same effect as pressing a button, except it lets a lot of air in or out rather than just a little bit. So I've used Frere Jacca because it's a tune we all know, dead easy, all on one row. And um, it's a good way to develop your air button technique. So let's look at our first bar. On my music, you'll see this pause minus one, which means that I want you to 
put your four fingers of your right hand on these buttons. This is a fourth button start instrument. So the fourth button down, if I press that button and push the bellows towards the closed position, that is the note G. Okay, so that's what I call the root note, the home note, if you like. And if I put my first finger on that note, on that button, and my fingers two, three, and four, sequentially underneath it, that's what I call the home position, or pos H. This tune, we're gonna play in pos minus one. In my language, that means one up from that position. So on this fourth button start instrument, the four fingers of my right hand will be on buttons three, four, five and six all the way through if you've got a third button start instrument you'll be uh, having your fingers on buttons two three four and five okay so that doesn't change all the way through so that makes life uh, nice and simple doesn't it so let's just look at the right hand for that first bar you've got g on the push finger two same button pulled out will give you uh, a so finger two again, and then the button below on the push will give you B, and then you return to the G. So you've got push, pull, push, push. Okay, do that again. Push, pull, push, push. As far as the left hand is concerned, I do something a little bit unusual here. I play G bass on the push. That's this fourth button down, and I use my fourth finger, like you can use your third or your second, whatever works for you. So G bass, and then I press the same button and pull out to get a D bass. And then I push in again to get G bass. So it's G bass, D bass, G bass. And then finally I play a chord. I come to the button above, button three, pushing in, G chord. So capital letter G is the G bass, capital letter D is the D bass, and lowercase or little G is the G chord. So G bass, D bass, G bass, G chord. So let's put that together. And notice I didn't use the air button at all. And of course, if I do the next bar, which is exactly the same, my bellows are already closing up quite a lot. Now this is a pretty small melodeon, so it hasn't got a lot of capacity uh, as far as the bellows goes. So I'm gonna close up those bellows really quickly. And of course, if they're closed, I'm gonna get no sound. So this is where the air button becomes very important. Now you'll notice on this note here, the second note of the bar here and here, that I've written the word air underneath. Okay, and that's because we're gonna use our air button as we play that note. So I'm just going to play the right hand and I'm gonna operate the air button. So keep an eye on my thumb, my left hand as I push it in. Now, what that's doing for me, of course, is letting more air uh, into the bellows. And so the bellows are coming out, so I've got more air available for the push notes that follow that A. You see, so I'm, if you like, buying air for myself to use in the future. Let's do that as I play the bass. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to add the bass this time. again now what you've got to try and do here is a very special technique when you operate that air button you lose compression in other words you lose volume so to compensate for that you have to pull as you do that pull you have to pull a bit harder to compensate for that loss of volume so in point of fact your audience shouldn't perceive any change let's see if I can do that so that it's all nice and even volume wise. Like that, you see? And now, as I go to the third bar, I've got plenty of air in my bellows to do the next bit. Now the bass is exactly the same for the next two bars. The right hand tune, of course, has changed. We now have this, B, C, D. B, C, D. Okay, so I've got a push, pull, push, push, pull, push, just like I had in the first two bars. So on the pull, 
I'm going to operate that air button just as I did in the first two bars. Uh, and by the way, the, the way to count uh, these two bars are one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Crotchet, crotchet, minim. Crotchet, crotchet, minim. The first two bars were one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Literally four crotchets, four beats in the bar. So one note on each beat. So let's play bar three and four. The left hand hasn't changed and the air button is in the same place. So you notice the air button is not used in between the notes, it's used as we play the notes. So as we play beat two, the note A in bars one and two, the note C in bars three and four, I operate the air button, pull a bit harder, actually physically pull using this bass strap uh, so that I don't lose the volume momentarily. So the bass line is exactly the same in all four bars. It's G bass, D bass, G bass, G chord. And as I play that D bass on the pull, that's where I push the air button in and pull a bit harder on the bellows so that the whole thing is nice and even. So let's play those first four bars and keep an eye on my thumb there. And now I've still got air in my bellows to go into bar five and bar six. If I hadn't have operated the air button, uh, pretty much the bellows would be closed by now. So hopefully you're begin beginning to see uh, how important it is to use your air button properly. I mean, eventually you'll do this without thinking. You'll do it so much as you practice. You'll do it like I do it now without thinking. I just do it um, automatically as I'm playing. I, I kind of feel the bellows closing up. So I'm nudging the air button without even thinking about it. But first you have to kind of think about it and uh, you do it until it you know the muscle memory takes over and you just do it automatically but it is it is pretty tricky at first and I, I must admit i struggled with this when i first started and you may be struggling with it too so a little exercise like this might really help you and it's quite interesting for me to put this together for you doing something that i do automatically actually sort of thinking about it right let's move down to bars five and six here we go the air button is on this e and on this c and this bar and of course this bar is the same so a bit tricky this one because it's a lot quicker let's sort the tune out first of all my little finger is on the note d for me it's a button number six it might be five for you um, if you've got a third button start so the tune is this so it's what i call a double dagger my little finger is on the d i push in to play the d note hold on to the button, pull out and push in again to get the E and the D again. So I press the button once, but that dagger symbol on my music means just hold on to the button and use the change of direction of the bellows to sound the note. Don't go like that, just simply go like that. And pull out square, don't let the bellows droop. So push, pull, push, all on one button, finger forward to get uh, D, E, D. Come to the button above, pull to get the note C, and then push in on the same button, so there's another dagger there, to get the B, and then the button above on the push for G. Now this is four quavers, two crotchets, so count it one and two and three, four. Okay, you know the tune, so it shouldn't be a problem to get the timing right. Uh, so that's the right hand. Now, let's look at the left hand. It's different, isn't it? You've got the G bass like you had before. You've got a D bass, but it's got an asterisk. That means I want you to play it not on the pull on that first uh, button you use, button four as it is. So you're not going, you're going to do this. You're going to play that D bass there on button two, also on the push. So although it adds up to the same, uh, as you had in the first four bars. You've got G bass, D bass, G bass, G chord. 
you're doing the D bass on the push on this button here. And you've got to do that because of the right hand. The right hand dictates that. So how are you going to get your air button in here? Well, you're going to have to do it on the E and the C. You're going to have this. Hopefully you can hear that little huff as I pull out uh, on the E and the C. So let's put that together. You see, so having used that air button like that, I've still got some air, not a lot, but just enough to get the last two bars in. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. And then in the last two bars of the tune, there's no air button because everything's on the push. And obviously if you run out of bellows at this point, uh, you're going to be in trouble because you're not going to be able to uh, play this bit because it's So in bars five six seven and eight the bass is all the same it's G bass on the push obviously D bass on the push G bass on the push G chord on the push so it's kind of a tune of two halves so in the first half of the tune the bass is G bass on the push, D bass on the pull, G bass on the push, G chord on the push, and the second half of the tune bars five, six, seven, and eight are G bass on the push, D bass on the push, G bass on the push, G chord on the push. So it's bars five and six are where you're gonna find it a bit tricky. Um, a good exercise is to play the bass line, the left hand if you like, without the right hand. So let's do that and let's listen out for the and watch out for the air button being used. You see, and I've still got some air left in the bellows. Admittedly, I wasn't playing the right hand. Obviously playing the right hand will eat up more air, but I'm sure you get the idea. And so you just have to practice it until it becomes second nature, until it becomes automatic. But, you know, if you've been struggling with the air button, you know, this might uh, help you understand why you need to use it, how to use it. And if you practice this little exercise on this famous tune, it will certainly help you develop your air button skills. So let's just pull the bellows out, give ourselves a fighting chance. Obviously, you know, the more you pull them out, the more air you're going to have to start with. And let's play the thing through for you. So there we are. I mean, I, having to concentrate and think about it, I find that quite hard. I guess if I just played it without thinking about it, I, I wouldn't struggle with it, but it is it's quite hard when you've got to think about it. So that's what I say, you know, keep working on it until it becomes automatic. Anyway, I hope you found this um, video useful and interesting. If you did, give it a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, and uh, thank you very much for watching, and you'll see me in my next video.